Good day, everyone, and welcome to Business Africa. I am Ruth Lago. The headlines this week. Wheat, sunflower, aluminum, or nickel, Russia and Ukraine play key roles in the global supply of raw materials destined for industrial or food sectors. What will the long and the short term consequences of the crisis be on African economies? It is the focus of this episode of Business Africa. Between January and December 2021, the agricultural export earnings of Rwanda have spiked. The country earned more than $543 million, according to the latest figures issued by the National Agricultural Export Development Council. Since the crisis between Russia and Ukraine erupted, the global prices of wheat, sunflower or oil crude have reached unprecedented levels. African countries which have been trading with Russia for years could be left short of supplies. It is particularly the case for Maghreb countries which rely on Russian and Ukrainian wheat, with imports accounting for more than 50 percent. In the sub-Saharan region, coffee, tea or citrus fruit exports to Russia may also be significantly reduced. However, this crisis may also benefit African countries. It could be the case for Algeria, which is Europe's third gas supplier. Before the Western sanctions against Russia, inflation was already soaring in several African countries. Maize prices jumped by 21%, wheat by 35%, soybeans by 20%, and sunflower oil by 11%. So with these restrictions on the Russian economy, concerns are growing on the continent. Some African countries are particularly dependent on wheat and sunflower oil. Several countries, including Algeria, Tunisia, and Morocco, depend on Russian and Ukrainian reserves. With the withdrawal of certain Swiss banks from the SWIFT international banking payment system, the impossibility for Africa to obtain a supplies will become a reality. Africa imported $4 billion worth of agricultural products in 2020 from Russia. An economic blow is expected to be felt in Zambia and Zimbabwe where Russian companies supply the bulk of the fertilizer used by these countries, namely potash or ammonium nitrate. On the continent, Russia has started to reposition itself as a strategic trading partner by becoming a shareholder in Afrex in 2017. Russian trade to the continent exceeded $20 billion in 2018, with Moscow's goal of doubling this figure by 2024. Russia is the fourth largest buyer of Kenyan tea, with a value of $54 million in 2020. On the positive side, Algeria accounts for 11% of Europe's gas imports. Moreover, whether it's Brent crude or American WTI, the barrel has reached a record threshold of $100. In the event of a partial interruption of Russian oil deliveries, other opaque countries such as Nigeria, Angola and Congo could be called upon to compensate for the shortfall, although some observers are still cautious about this. My guest is Mr. Ibrahim Hassan Mayaki, the Executive Secretary of the New Partnership for Africa's Development Agency. Thank you, Mr., for joining us on African News. Prior to the sanctions hitting Russia, Africa was already experiencing inflation. What factors are responsible for the rising costs of essential items one can observe across the world? For early to more than two years, that is to say, with the appearance of this global pandemic, we have entered an inflection zone, inflection from a geopolitical point of view, and inflection from the point of view of the type of relationship that Africa, that is our continent, has with its partners. Western countries have made massive use of what they call quantitative easing. They have produced money to support their economies, and there, that amounts to hundreds of billions of dollars. 
Africa does not have an African Central Bank. Africa has not been able to do the same thing. Basically, is inflation channeled through the central bank, paralyzed by capital? Inflation is a product of this rather large injection of monetary resources into Western economies. And obviously, this has an impact on our economies. How can we then fight this inflation and profit from it? The type of development that was fundamentally based on aid, this type of development is no longer sustainable. We have to rely on our domestic resources. That is to say, we have to mobilize our national income. And for that, there are neuro mechanisms activated, notably better fiscal measures. And that's because we are the continent that has the lowest tax pressure in the world. So, mobilization of national income from domestic resources. The second point is, we must implement our continental free trade area the treaty of which has been signed. This is important because if we increase our capacity to trade with each other, but not to trade in corn and sorghum, but to trade with value, added product, we will be able to have a better control of our economies and therefore of inflation. And the third important point is that for Africa to have a role to play in the global economy, it must move from a position of dependence to one of leadership. It must pass through a learning curve of competitiveness with integrity. And we will be able to master this learning curve of competitiveness within our regional groups. Let's touch again on the matter of sanctions on Russia. What will the immediate consequences on African economies be? It is important for us to deconstruct the immediate term. What we can foresee as immediate may be different from what will happen in the medium and long term. But my personal opinion is it is still too early to estimate the consequences of these sanctions. I was listening to analysts suggesting that even estimating the sanctions against Russia today is difficult in the very short term. It's instead going to take time. So obviously, we have to individually, as a country, look at the economic chapters that are affected and see possible responses. That is a theoretical analysis, but collecting facts if we are positioned in such and such a market, and that market is influenced by sanctions, and if that market is influenced by sanctions, what scenario can we have? This is something that all states have to do. This is something that all states have to do, and it is also something that the African Union, with its specialized department, will do. But between this immediate analysis and the evaluation of the consequences of sanctions in the medium term, there is a gap, and no one knows what that gap is at the moment. Mr. Ibrahim Hassan Mayaki, thank you for your insight. I remind our viewers you are the Executive Secretary of the NPAD. Let's head to Rwanda. The agricultural experts have brought cash in the state's coffers. In 2021, the country saw a 39% growth in the exports of its main products, namely tea, coffee, dairy and roses. One of the reasons explaining this rise is the post-COVID economic recovery. Take a look. Rwanda's National Agricultural Export Development Council reported an increase of 39% in exports last year compared to 2020 figures. Amongst the products that registered the greatest increases is tea, whose revenues rose by 7%. 
Another product that saw a sharp increase was coffee, with Rwanda exporting 17.4 million kilos, which brought in nearly 78.3 million US dollars. Dairy products and flowers also contributed revenues to the government's coffers. Flower export volumes rose by 40.8%, generating $8.8 million in revenue. The East African country aims to double its revenues by 2024. This episode of Business Africa comes to an end. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.